Hey guys, Saf coming at you with another Raid Shadow Legends video. So there is a summon rush going on right now and it is pretty atrocious. I haven't really spoken about it for the weekend. Obviously we came out on Friday, I'm recording this on Sunday. I was waiting to pull a few more Void Shards from the Clan Boss and various different things. But it is pretty atrocious, the volume of summon rush points. You need to get this done. We are talking effectively 10 Sacred Shards if you were to do it through Sacreds, which it's the way that most people do summon rush right most people know summon rush it's all about how many sacred shards you have ancient are pretty poor voids are a good medium in this event we have got a times 10 and a guaranteed void epic now the times 10 is pretty bonkers you know you've got reho bone spear probably one of the best champions for the uh the new sand devil dungeon and overall a really good champion it can solo a lot of content we've got probably three of the one of the best champions here like duchess uh, Elva and Brogni are some of the best legendary champions in the game. If you pull one of these, your, ac your account progression goes really crazy. I tried to get some of these on my free-to-play, which I will be releasing a video on next week when we do another episode, just because I got really frustrated by the fact that these the Summon Rush wasn't scaled on the free-to-play. So I pulled all my shards and I didn't get anything, but hey, it's still an interesting video to watch. We've also got Manny to going on here, a really great Void Epic. And then some decent non-void epics. Quargon is being used in Sand Devil in some teams. He's also a decent epic, although nothing groundbreaking. Sepulchre Sentinel is a very good early game to mid game clan boss champion. And then obviously Morzo Mage is the old school uh, Seer buff partner if you don't have any of these other ones. But the, the big thing coming out here is also there is a guaranteed void for an epic. 40 voids, which is, I would add, is higher than any other guaranteed void epic before. The other void epics are around about 20, 15, 30, somewhere in that region. 40 is, we're seeing an increase. So this trend that, you know, Elva was 20 sacreds and we've got more voids and more ancients, it seems to be that it hasn't gone down. Now, the champion on offer here is a new void epic. It is Akintum, which I think he is a skinwalker. And he is actually a very, very interesting champion. We have an A1, attacks three times. Great for Fire Knight if you're pulling him for a, sort of a free-to-play or an early game account. But just generally great anyway. Giant Slayer can be used. Each hit has a 50% chance when booked, chance of placing a 5% poison debuff for two turns. If the target is under a hex debuff, each hit also has a 50% chance of applying a debuff spread, taking one random debuff from the target and placing it on all enemies. Now, because this is each hit, this goes from what would have been an average ability to being a very, very strong ability. This is probably the best debuffing spread ability in the game now. Due to the fact it's on an A1, each hit has a 50-50 chance of spreading one debuff to any enemy under hex. Naturally, you would think, okay, well, I need the hex. Attacks all enemies three times. Each hit has a 60% chance of increasing the duration of any hex debuffs by one enemy. That books up to 75%. So you're basically saying pretty much two of those three hits are probably going to extend the debuff. If enemies are not under hex debuff, each hit has a 60% chance of placing. So that's on a three turn cooldown and it's another triple hitter. So Giant Slayer is most definitely the best option here. He's going to basically keep Hex up all the time because if it's not applied to the enemy, he's going to apply it. And if it is applied to the enemy, he's going to extend it. And probably each individual hit, it could even go that you apply it. Then you have two hits at a 75% chance to extend it. So Hex is almost always on the enemy unless they have some form of blocking or cleansing. And then we have this kind of interesting passive, Hexblood. Has an 80% chance of inflicting damage from one poison debuff to enemies under Hex debuff whenever their allies receive damage from poison debuffs. I'm going to cover this in more detail in the patch notes video that will be going out on Monday. And the way it's meant to be coded is effectively if an enemy takes 50,000 poison damage, then 50,000 poison damage is applied to every en other enemy under Hex debuff. It can't crit, it ignores defense, it should do and it uh, is a fixed damage component. So it'll always do that fixed 50,000 if the poison does 50,000 damage. Now, obviously, if the, if the poison does less or more, it's going to scale appropriately. But because it is transferred from a poison damage debuff to a direct damage debuff, what you will find is enemies who are immune to poison debuff, they may not be able to proc the passive, but they can receive damage from the passive. So in places like Hydra, where three of the six heads are immune to poison, as long as one of the enemies that you attack with is A1 or that they take a turn, 
every enemy that is under hex should also get a proc of that damage. I'm not sure how this interacts with someone like a Teodor, someone who does an AoE poison activator, but I would imagine that activators activate this passive as well. So you could find that you could use him in some speed teams with Teodor and reduce the amount of initial poisons that you require to be able to achieve this outcome. If you don't have a Calvalax, but you have a Teodor, maybe you can use Akintum here to basically get yourself some bonus damage because effectively, whenever he activates one poison on one target, everyone takes another poison. So you're, you're buying yourself one extra poison. Now, if this works individually on an AOE component, so you have five enemies, you've got five poisons out, one on each enemy. When you activate each poison on each enemy, it might actually proc this five times, one for each enemy that gets activated. So it means that every enemy potentially could have four more poisons on themselves. So it could be really interesting to speed tune. We also have an 18% speed in all battles, which is nice to have as well. So overall, as a guaranteed Void Epic, if I was in a situation where I had 40 Voids and I was still pushing dungeons, he would be quite a desirable champion to pick up. Now I'm gonna pick him up here, not because I'm, I wanna justify the 40 Ancient Voids, but because I know people will be asking me how it works and I need to test it. I don't have access to a test server. I don't have access to any of the features and I would like to be able to produce content on this myself so that I could tell people and show people the value of it how it works if someone does pick it up so what i want to say is really i don't justify the 40 voids some people will say well you're still pulling 40 voids you're justifying it by taking part in it i get that but i want to be able to produce content for my community and that is the goal here so we also need to do the summon rush and the summon rush is a lot of points. I want to hold my sacreds for a guaranteed sacred so I don't have to invest so hard. The way this is going to work out is there is 120 points per void shard. I need to pull 40 void shards. So that means I will basically end up around about 4,800. So the 40 guaranteed will probably get me enough to get me the fragments. I can save every other shard. So that is what we're going to do. If I pick up a Void Legendary along the way, that's awesome. But I'm not expecting to with such a small number and it being a times sort of a normal standard rates. It's just a times 10 for Man Eater and a guaranteed. There's no other odds. So without further ado, let's see what we get. So the first pull here. Straight in with an epic, one of the best epics in the game, Seer. If only I could pull that on my free-to-play account. That's what's going to be brutal about these kind of shard pull videos going forward. I'll be sitting here going, if only I had this champion on my free-to-play account. And we just get some bog standard sort of rare champions here. Nothing particularly to shout home about. Obviously some pretty clan, big clan boss ones in terms of painkeeper there. What else are we going to get? Gear grinder. This is what you get on a normal rates, pretty much. It's all blue. We get another epic, a Scylar, another champion that I would be absolutely over the moon on if I got on my free to play, but I already have a Scylar and I've already used her in the past for a great extent. We do need to clear up some space, so I'll be right back. So we've cleared up some more space. Let's pull 10 more champions. Are we going to get anything in these 40? Are all we going to get is rares? Probably just the rares if we're being honest here. More blue. We do get another epic, a skull crown. I mean, these epic champions we are pulling are very good epic champions. We got a Drowned Bloat Wraith, a Renegade. We don't really need any of these in my level of an account now. We are looking for basically legendaries or brand new Void Epics, which I pretty much is only Akim Tum I don't have. I have Void Epics for everything else. So it looks like at the end of this 10 pull, we are going to get Akim Tum in one more pull. Here he comes. There is the Akim Tum. We'll get a Cold Heart here. We already have loads of those. Although I do need to make a third Cold Heart, so we'll probably keep hold of that. Let's, let's might as well pull the last three voids, why not? Just to make sure we get the summon rush completed. What else have we got here? An Amarantine Skeleton. The other positive thing to look at this is I'm working my way towards another Void Mercy. And then when I find the next times 10 that I want to pull at, I can obviously make sure I maximize my chances of getting the Void Legendary. But there you go, guys. That is the reality of not pulling during a times 2 event. And to be honest, not I didn't even get a times 10 man eater as well. But we do manage to complete pretty much all of this. We are pretty close to this legendary book. Let's accept all these things up. This first row of the summon rush is a bit of a joke as well for an endgame player. This should be an epic book. This should be a million silver. Seven bros is fine. That should be probably 150 energy. And this should be probably 250 energy. And that should be not even existent. I mean, a one day experience boost for me right now is a bit of a joke. When you consider 
I've got 26 weeks of XP boost. They should really improve the first row. I understand maybe the first 300 points are not crazy, but five, a thousand points is two sacreds. And for two sacreds, I'm getting a little bit of silver, some energy and a rare skill tome. It's not good enough. So the question is, do we pull, how many points do we need here? We're at 190. So that's around about 310 points away from a legendary skill tome. Do we YOLO one single sacred? Let's do it. One single sacred for a bit of luck. Anything good out of this. It's an epic. And it's a mausoleum mage. We won't be pulling any more sacreds for that. But, we, you know, one sacred for a legendary book is okay. You know, and I'm not going to go for the rank 5 chicken. The rest of this whale row can, uh, can go and do one. But we do pull another Titan event here. We've been sort of... I've been monitoring all these Titan events. I'm going to do an update at the end of the month. What can we do here? We can get a silver chest as well. I'm sure we'll get useless stuff out of that. But what do we get in our silver event chest? A three-star chicken. Not the end of the world, actually. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of take that. It's not the end of the world. Do have some souls we're going to pull as well. So let's just see what we get out of this soul stone. We're still looking for the same type of champions, but mostly we'll get rares, like a one-star hill nomad. What else are we going to get? Probably a one-star, a two-star flinger. Anything else? It's a two-star confessor. Actually not a bad rare, now that I've seen it on the free-to-play account. So we get four rares. And we can collect our 200 coins. And we also have a tier 2 that we got from the Summon Rush. Can we get anything good in this video apart from Akintum? <sighs> it's a wish list, Judge. I think he's already fully awakened beyond that point, though. I'm pretty sure my Judge is at 4 stars. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's a bit of a waste. But hey, it's coins, I guess, we can recycle. But we already have that. There's no point keeping it. 12 coins is absolutely awful so yeah we could pick up this mithrala two star i've been tempted about it or even a fortis one star i'm saving up my tier threes again to see if we can pick up anything extra um but yeah so there you go guys that is the end of the summon rush we've picked up akimtum we didn't get anything else other than akimtum so it's a pretty expensive akimtum but i will be trying to do some content on him this week in terms of how you can use him, how he works, making sure that his passive works how it's meant to work. I'm pretty sure I want to try him in Nightmare Hydra to see how, how valuable and how uh, strong his actual passive could be. Hex in Hydra is really good, so it'll be interesting to see. But there you go, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next week with more video content coming out. We'll have a new episode on the free-to-play episode. I will be doing a breakdown of some of the new systems we've had in the game, talking about the player and play points, talking about these uh, Titan events, uh, and also looking forward to February's update in terms of what we've got. I'll also have the patch notes video, which is a bit late than normal, for the recent patch where we look at all the champions at different events. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.